Hello, welcome to today's class on understanding geography with diagrams. Now, today we'll basically be talking about your atmospheric humidity. We'll be talking about the atmospheric humidity. its types and its influence on atmosphere just writing it in the short form now first of all let us understand the concept of the humidity now what do we mean by this atmospheric humidity now humidity is nothing but the amount of the water vapor that is being present in the atmosphere now how come there is the water vapor in the atmosphere see water vapor water vapor in the atmosphere is basically basically there because of the process of number one it's your evaporation number two it's your transpiration last but not least it's your sublimation now back to physics what do we mean by evaporation conversion of the water vapor sorry yes conversion of your liquid h2o to your water vapor or simply we can say liquid to gas now what is transpiration now transpiration again it is nothing but your liquid to gas but in the process of transpiration the water vapor comes out of what it's your plants exclusively your plants and then it goes from liquid to gaseous stage next is the sublimation sublimation again as per the law as per physics says it's nothing but the conversion of the solid to gas now what exactly can be solid what exactly can be gas it's up to you to understand and it's up to you to analyze i can give you an example ice glaciers next see now basically what happens so basically what are the types of atmospheric humidity now basically for the study of the influence of the atmospheric humidity on the atmosphere we basically classify the atmospheric humidity as abs means absolute humidity number two specific it's your specific humidity and last but not the least it's your relative humidity now see we basically need to understand the basics and this basics in as simple form as possible no need to do a research over it first of all what is absolute humidity absolute humidity is nothing but the amount of water vapor amount of water vapor or the basically i would say the mass of the water vapor mass of water vapor per unit per the unit volume of air it's the mass of water vapor per unit volume of air that is simply means an absolute humidity what is the specific humidity specific humidity is nothing but the mass of the water vapor i'm writing it as h2o by the mass of the air column now when i am writing air column it means that the mass of the water vapor that we had taken over here plus the dry mass understood this is the ratio of the mass of the water vapor to the mass of the air column which includes not just the wet mass but also the dry mass next we have your relative humidity now, what is this relative humidity relative humidity says again that the amount of water vapor present in the air column divided by amount of water vapor that the air column can hold at a particular temperature into 100 
Now see. Now when it comes to uh, research in geography or in the research in science, we basically use relative humidity and we never use this absolute or specific humidity because of certain demerits of the absolute and specific humidity. Now what are the demerits of the absolute and specific humidity? Now see, basically let us look at the absolute humidity, mass of the water vapor per unit volume of the air. Now the mass of the water vapor per unit volume of the air is never constant. It keeps on changing. As you go to higher latitude, as you go even in the regional basis, it keeps on changing. It is never stable in the regional basis. For example, if I'm now I'm in the uh, now I'm in a coastal area, in the coastal area basically what will happen? Obviously, the mass of the water vapor would be higher, but the unit volume. Here. Now let's move on to a little continental area. The mass of the water vapor will reduce. So this what happened was that it, that absolute humidity itself in the regional level was very pathetic to take up. Now. They came up with the specific humidity. Specific humidity says that mass of the water vapor okay by the mass of the air column, which is the dry mass and the which also includes the dry mass. Now, in specific humidity, what happened is that when we move from one climate to another, let's go from the tropics to temperate. What happens in the temperate? Temperate is simply mean uh, simply uh, it simply happens is that increase in the latitude means increase, decrease, fall in the temperature. Now with the fall in the temperature. What will also happen? The humidity or the water holding capacity of the particular air might also get reduced. Means the dry air mass would be more than the wet air mass. Hence in this context also the specific humidity could not be used in this context because of the variation. Both absolute humidity and the specific humidity there was a complete variation and that could not be used in a particular level. Now then came the relative humidity. Now relative humidity basically said that ki, what is the amount of water vapor a particular air column can hold means let us say in 20 degrees centigrade at 20 degrees centigrade sorry that's the pencil here let's say 20 degrees centigrade one liter of the water just for example one liter of the water can be held by the particular column now if the water is holding in this 20 degrees centigrade the water is holding consider 500 ml so what does this means this means that key, the air column is unsaturated now think of it if at the 20 degree centigrade it's holding 1.5 liter what does it means it means it's oversaturated so basically what happened is this relative humidity is that key it gave it gave us a basically means it gave us the total uh, characteristics of the air column whether it's saturated whether it's unsaturated or whether it's oversaturated but such thing was not possible in case of absolute humidity or the specific humidity hence relative humidity started to become a very universal phenomenon for the geographical as well as for the scientific study especially in your metrology to determine but to determine the phenomenons of the rainfall to determine whether that would be fog dew uh, whether that be hailstorm uh, whether uh, again for the cyclonic predictions the, uh, the the relative humidity started to be utilized rather than this absolute and your specific humidity i hope you um, i hope this uh, humidity concept is clear thank you